So every year from mid to late April, the Lyrid meteor shower streaks through the night sky. Astrophotographer Andrew McCarthy talks about how to get the best chance of snapping a photo of this light display. Generally, photography is about capturing what you see. Um, and, you know, you take a photo of a person, you're physically seeing that person. Um, now, astrophotography is about capturing the invisible. Making photographing celestial events tricky. But this year, the Lyrids will be peaking just after the new moon, meaning the sky will be extra dark with little interference from moonlight. You'll see a, a couple, potentially a couple meteors per minute, which is quite a lot. Um, and you can actually look out for bolides. Those are larger meteors that can that tend to break apart and even flash when they break when they re-enter, which is really cool to see and kind of rare. The Lyrid meteor shower radiant will appear appear from the Lyra constellation. Andrew says cell phones don't capture these light shows well, but a DSLR camera with a wide angle lens does a nice job and even better. What I do is I, I use an intervalometer that basically just takes photos over and over and over and over and over again all night because you're not going to time the meteor. There's no way you can hit the shutter fast enough to capture it when it's happening. That allows you to enjoy the light show and capture photos all night. Oh, there's just something magical, yeah. you know, it just allows you to escape from that distraction that we deal with all day in clear skies. Warmer weather this weekend should make for a beautiful viewing. Yeah, I hope I remember to go check it out. <laughs> right. But even if you miss it, the biggest annual meteor shower is the Perseid, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that happens in August.